Hey guys, my name is Isabella Grace and I want to share with you guys my testimony today and I just wanted to let you guys know that it's not about me, it's not about necessarily my story but rather how God was able to orchestrate everything for his glory and how he just transformed me drastically. So I just wanted to keep this video a bit short because I don't want to bore you guys. Basically, um, let me just give you guys a little bit of um, family background. So I grew up in a Christian household. Now, I've been forced to go to church. I know a lot of people can relate um, with me about this one, but I've been forced to go to church. If I don't go to church, I'll get beat. In terms of my parents, I've never met my biological dad. When I was only 15, I found out that my dad that I've been living with now is in fact my stepdad. And then a year after, a year or two after, in 2014, my mum passed away from spontaneous brain hemorrhage. I was very torn and broken from that point. Like, I was numb. I always said to myself, my biggest fear is losing my mum. And now that it's come to pass, like, I genuinely just didn't know how to feel. I felt so numb that nothing can hurt me anymore. Like, I was very very depressed i was crying day in day out i would not be with my friends not talk to them i wouldn't do anything with my family like it came to a point where my family was just so separated like we were so we would distance ourselves and we were all like sh like it was strained we weren't operating as a family anymore we were just in fact existing on the same household yeah i've honestly been struggling to have a relationship with my current dad now because a thing about Asian culture is that we don't show love with our mouth as in like saying it like words of affirmation like showing affection I'm not saying all, all Asian families are like that but that's how my family operates like we don't, we're not affectionate we don't say I love you we don't kiss we don't hug like if anything we show um, love through gestures so the way my dad was showing me love is by giving me money or doing things that I would tell him to do like dropping me somewhere or again giving me money I can't speak to them the way other family other people can speak to their parents like you know how you guys can catch up with your mom catch up with your dad joke about with them like it's not even like that with me like literally it's complicated you know I'd have my friends will come over and they'd just be like Rah, it's a bit quiet in here oh dear <laughs> And whenever I go to my friend's house and they just have this nice environment with their family, I'm just thinking, wow, man, you guys are so lucky. You guys don't know what you've got. Now, on that same year that my mum died, I broke up with my boyfriend at the time. And um, that was because my parents, when I say my parents, I mean my dad and my auntie, uh, my mum's sister who lives with us. So my parents didn't like my boyfriend. Um, it was very messy, actually. Like, I remember having a physical fight with my dad and I was screaming so bad I ran outside the house and my neighbours called the police on my dad and he ended up getting arrested and social services ended up getting involved while I was in sixth form so this was during exam season as well of course I wasn't at home for a week because of what was going on but it did have an effect on my exam results and they, the school ended up using my predicted grades, but glory to God, I still received an unconditional offer from one of my chosen unis. After that, I got baptised. Now, I just remember one of, I think it was my pastor or someone from the congregation said to us, be careful because now the enemy's going to come after you. And I'm just thinking, okay. When I tell you, the enemy is quick. Like... I'm, we're driving back to London now. Yo, the enemy was dashing all these kind of boys in my place. Like, I was receiving WhatsApp messages, Snapchat messages, Twitter messages, all of this, like, in one day. I genuinely couldn't see things spiritually at the time. I didn't know it was the enemy. I'm obviously saying it's the enemy now, but it was just wild. Like, it was overwhelming for me because I was thinking, why are all these old people from my past now popping up? So at that moment, I was basically, I fell into the trap, like I was naive, I was gullible, 
I ended up meeting these boys, you know, I ended up being promiscuous. There was a season where I was moving promis promiscuous, sorry. I was moving wild, I was partying, I was drinking, I was smoking, I was out there. I, I went to every party in Hackney, like, you would just see me, you know, in my bralette, in my shorts, just wearing revealing clothes. I was honestly struggling with lust, I was struggling with masturbation, I was struggling with fornication, I was just struggling with a lot of things to a point where now I couldn't go back to God, like I was too ashamed, I just thought God was so disappointed in me, I thought God didn't like me anymore, so I just kept doing what I was doing because I was just thinking why not, you know, if I really disappointed God, like what's the point, like that's, that was just my mindset basically. I didn't pick myself back up and go back to him. I just kept dwelling in that place. So after that, went uni. And, you know, things didn't change. I was still partying. I didn't really have much friends in uni. But I did have some friends who would try to get me out of my room. Um, try to basically, you know, just chill with me. But there were just times where I just pushed them away. And I just wanted to be my, by myself. Because I'm actually a person who likes my own company. I don't really like going out as much or being in a place where a lot of people are there i fell into depression again i didn't even take first year seriously i was literally just winging it i don't even know how i got into second year but um again it's his grace it's literally his grace second year now i got into a relationship with someone we literally enjoyed each other's company a lot we would be on facetime every single day when i tell you the whole day every night sleeping on the phone to, um, to each other waking up we'll still be on the phone and we just do things together like he was actually the only person that I was with at the time like I don't even know the last time I saw my friends when I was with him but he was my best friend at the time so we were so infatuated with each other we were so I hope like we were actually idolizing each other come to think of it I went to Marrakesh for my birthday and I fell back into depression again because it was my birthday and I'm not gonna lie to you I'm not even trying to be funny but my family didn't say happy birthday to me imagine this guys my brother was with me right he didn't even say happy birthday are you mad are you actually crazy I didn't even get messages from my dad or my auntie went on Facebook mind you my family is massive like I have so many people in my family why did I only see two or three cousins say happy birthday to me? Are you actually crazy? So I'm just thinking, wow, I'm actually not loved. Like, I'm actually deep in. No one loves me. <laughs> That's why I guess I was so clingy to my boyfriend because he was the only one showing me love at the time. Like, other than that, my mum was always the one showing me affection. She would always appreciate me, say I love you. She got me flowers on my birthday. And I don't get that from the family I have now, like, it's just crazy like even when I got into uni they didn't appreciate me they didn't show me that they were proud or anything like that and then when I got back you know my my boyfriend just gave me gifts spent time with me then he left to go on holiday now because obviously I wasn't with him for like a certain amount of time that I wasn't used to yet, so I felt suicidal now and I was texting him saying stuff like I want to kill myself. I don't want to be here anymore. Basically, giving him anxiety while he's meant to be having fun now. He felt useless. He felt so bad. He felt hurt that he couldn't be there for me. He ended up having a massive argument. It caused a massive strain in the relationship. It just kept happening. Like, even when he went to uni, like, we were still arguing back to back. In that period, um, something mad also happened to me where I went through something traumatizing that i was having flashbacks i was having dreams i was thinking about it and i couldn't i couldn't cope so again i ran away from home and it was just mad like i couldn't handle this anymore it was just too much to bear one day my sister in christ messaged me so she's she's someone that i met um she's someone that was introduced to me by my boyfriend at the time because in the beginning of the relationship me and him used to go to church um so she messaged me i don't even know how she found my instagram but she messaged me saying oh hey how are you hey, the next day we planned to go nando's together now when we went nando's 
she was just telling me it's like she was explaining to me her relationship with god and what god did for her and this and that and i was just thinking wow like i want the same thing and i was just looking at her and i was just thinking sis you're actually glowing like like there's light radiating from you just on fire like i wanted to get to know god i really wanted to start now because there's one thing to say you want to know god but then it's what you do about it that kind of testifies that you want it bad enough so i've been screaming that i wanted a relationship with god for time but now that i'm taking these active steps and seeking him diligently that's when you see true changes coming about so i started reading the word i started listening to gospel i started praying more and i just felt joy like it's not even happiness it is joy like the thing with happiness is it's based on external things like my happiness was coming from being with my boyfriend or being at these certain parties but then when all of that fades away when it passes away then what your happiness is gone and that's why a lot of people most of the time are like oh i don't know the last time i was happy so um i was still in a relationship with my boyfriend and as i was seeking god he was kind of finding it hard to um I genuinely felt like that was because of me because I was still you know a distraction to him I don't think it was kind of something that he could deal with at that moment because I was actually growing at a fast pace that like I stopped swearing there were times where I just rebuke him for swearing around me um, there were things that I couldn't do that I couldn't indulge in anymore and it's like it was a bit too much so I just thought it was a very difficult decision for me to make but because I care for his soul, this is how you know that you, um, when you love someone, when you actually care for their soul and you care about yours as well, you have to let them go. Because there's bigger things that matter. Yes, you love them. Yes, you care for them. But if you really do, then you will make sure that they get it right with God. Do you know what I mean? So, as like, we both agreed that we would seek God, basically. So we broke up. It's just amazing how God's just been working in me. Like... I remember going back to uni and a lot of people were just like oh my god you look different i didn't do anything new with my hair i didn't do anything new with my makeup they just said you're glowing and i'm just like wow like when it says in second corinthians that the old is gone and the new has come it's not just a renewal of the mind it's not just your desires that are gone but it's also like your physical appearance like even my sister in christ said to me you know when i used to look at you i used to look at you like as if you're someone who used to have sex a lot and this and that but now you don't look like that i can't even imagine you having sex I'm just like, what? <laughs> I feel honestly touched like when people can see the difference because it wasn't easy. Like I really did have to go through a madness. Like man, like the way he's orchestrated everything, this, I need to go through this for me to turn back to him because certain times where you'll be pressed to a point where you don't know who to turn to but God after I, you know, rededicated my life is it honestly wasn't easy for me like there was a season where i backslid and um i was still struggling with you know fornication and struggling with lust and i was kind of swearing and it just took me a while to get back up on my feet because i genuinely i was stuck in my own ways in my own mindset i just thought no like i'm too ashamed to go back to god man this is just long this is actually long but then I just thought, you know what? The word says the righteous fall down seven times. Jesus has made me righteous. Like, I need to get up. I need to get up. And it's so important that you lot surround yourself with like-minded people to help edify and exhort you. Ever since I've started seeking God, like, I have just been set free. Like, when I tell you shackles have been broken, bondages broken, curses broken all of these things that like, i've been delivered from so many things depression masturbation fornication lust salvation is the initial free gift but then other gifts come with it like joy peace comfort guys it's a beautiful thing and i just really want to encourage you girls or boys out there who are watching this that you guys can too seek a relationship with god and you know be it at the place that i'm at as well and even more because i'm still seeking him as well i'm still learning some things you actually understand that jesus died for your sins once and for all it's forgiven you all you have to do is remember that when you backslide because the moment you actually forget and you're not conscious of these things you're not conscious of his love and his word 
that's when you start to dwell in that place for too long that you're ashamed to now go back to God and that's what happened to me it's funny because my own like my own friends were actually shocked and also confused and in fact even in doubt like they're just thinking what's going on what happened to you like why are you now on God those things are kind of discouraging to me because I'm just thinking am I not capable of seeking God like God actually had to bring me through um, certain situations where I was being persecuted so that I can come out here and share my testimony because it's not easy very hard for me to be out there with my faith especially if you know a lot of people still look at me the way that I used to be and they're just like oh that Isabella girl yeah she's on this Jesus thing now you know oh she's a good girl now or oh yeah she's a church girl like those things don't faze me as long as you see a transformation as long as God gets the glory that's fine with me people actually knew me as someone who was out there so for me to come out and now be on this god thing it's like a massive change and i just want to let you guys know that you guys can do it too like there's no need to be ashamed we actually have been called to really save souls and like god is trying to use you you just need to obey you just need to listen to him and just say yes i'm still striving for perfection i serve a perfect god so and i know i can do it that's what faith says you can do it and i will and i will i will i just wanted to let you guys know that what you're going through right now is not a coincidence it's not something that is useless or in vain it's something to add to your testimony and to show god's glory because everything happens for a reason you know there's no such thing as a coincidence in the eyes of god there's no such thing as an accident everything was ordained my sister in christ meeting with me at nando's that was a divine appointment because had it not been for her I wouldn't have been seeking Christ as much as I would have now and I just really encourage you guys as well if you're a new believer or if you're someone who wants to get started read the word that's my biggest piece of advice you have to read the word you have to pray and most importantly put yourself out there and fellowship with people get people in your circle who can really um, edify you you guys can do this you really can if I can do it me someone who was out there you guys can too so i just really 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 pray that you guys start to walk in your calling that you guys take active steps that your desires what you profess with your mouth it inspires action because otherwise you're just going to be stagnant and you're just going to keep saying i want to seek god until jesus comes and then it's too late thank you guys for listening to my testimony i really hope that um this has touched you all glory goes to the father honestly so I just want to thank you guys for listening to me. God bless you.